So the encouragement is that though the gate is narrow and few of, their, few of us that find it, that is not a text that says, cross all your fingers and toes. Maybe you get to be one of the two or three people that get to go to heaven. Have you noticed when we have that theology, it's always us that's getting in. <laughs> it's always us that's found the straight gate, and the, the narrow gate and the straight way, and it's the other people in all those crazy kooky denominations and the, the high church and those orthodox people and the Catholics and the, uh, that one denomination we don't like and all those other people, they're not getting it. It's silliness. That was, that's how I cut my teeth on that verse. We found a way we're getting in. The truth is, is that there's too many days of Paul White's life when he cruises around on the Broadway that leads to destruction. I don't mean hell. I mean hell on earth. There's too many days where Paul White just rides around on that Broadway going, I'm going to tell this guy exactly what I think, man. I am going to win this fight. I am going to get back. I am going to win this. There's not enough of them where I squeeze in through that narrow gate and go, I'm going to treat today my sister, my brother, the way I wish I'd be. I'm going to treat my enemy today. Here's where it really starts getting narrow. I'm going to treat my enemy today the way I wish they'd treat me. I'm going to love that guy today that's been talking bad about me the way I wish he'd love me. And, and there's going to be that voice in my ear that goes, this ain't going to work. This guy's going to eat you up. And you know what that voice is saying? There's a really broad way over here. Just come on over. Why are you driving so tight over there? You could just spin, spin your wheels way out here on this road where you get to say whatever you want to say and you get to really get it off your chest. You get to go out there and really just do what you need to do. You get to go out there and, and show them up. I know you're better than that because I believe you have a king and a kingdom. And I believe that more often than we're all even probably aware, we're starting to have the response of the king and we're walking in the narrow gate. Now, I don't know exactly what you'll do with this message or how you'll apply it. I think it's one of those you'll chew over. It'll come back to you a few times. Here's what I hope we'll do. Stop discounting these verses as A, not being part of the new covenant so you don't really have to pay attention to them, and B, tickets to heaven and hell. Instead, look at these verses as relevant for how you function in a kingdom and say, today I'm going to go out there and make sure. It's narrow. It ain't easy. But I'm going to go out there today and I'm going to love somebody the way they love me. And it's not just a, a principle I give my kindergartner on his way to Sunday school. Go out there, put a, you know, put, have my kid live better than I do. Go out there and treat people today the way you wish you'd be treated, because I'm going to go to work and tear someone's head off. And so, <laughs> no. <laughs> instead, instead of, you go do it, Father, here am I, Lord. Send me. Help me walk through the narrow gate. Right? Father, thank you tonight for the word. Thank you for the beauty of this. Thank you for helping me to, to wrestle a little bit. And Father, really what I want to pray is not that we've gotten anywhere. I just want to pray that myself and those watching by video and listening by audio and for those of my friends in this room, we're going to go out and face a world and we have a mandate to love them the way we wish we were loved and to realize that that's a straight gate and a narrow way. And when we fail, which we will, it doesn't mean we're going to burn in a devil's hell, but it does mean that we walk into the way of destruction that the Bible is so clearly telling us is out there. And I don't want to live in that destruction. I have too much. Amen. Where I want to live is in the way of life. And I know that way has you standing right in the middle of it. And Father, that's the strength we're looking for. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 To me, that's a fun word tonight. I, it's, not really fun to, it's not really fun to admit the places that I don't do it, that I misapply it, or that I fail. But it's a fun word to realize we haven't got everything nailed. He's still doing his work in us. And it's Jesus standing on that narrow way going, this isn't, this isn't some ladder to heaven. This is, where, this is the road the Father and I live on, and I want to walk on this road with you. And you have all the equipment to walk on that road. And, and I think that's beautiful. Anybody have anything to add? Any questions, any thoughts? Any? You know, you'd hear people in the church say that. that they, they preach the straight and narrow down there. That guy's really lived on the straight and narrow. And, and that usually has to do with sex, drugs, alcohol, prison, 
violence. Real. I mean, it's always like stuff. If you're not doing the stuff, you're on the straight and narrow. I, to me, the Jesus definition of the straight and the narrow was loving people the way you wish they'd love you. It's straight and narrow because it ain't easy and it ain't going to come natural to you. And there's no room to turn left or right. Like there's not a day you get to go, eh, forget that today. <laughs> you, don't, you don't get to take a left turn. Like you had a bad Thursday, so you go, well, you know what? Forget it. I'm going to go knock something out today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't believe he created us that way. I really don't. I believe that's the, the crux of the Cain and Abel story. I believe that that God warns Cain just before he kills Abel. God comes to Cain and goes, Cain, sin lies at the door. It's your destiny to be the master over it. In other words, what you're about to do is going to change the course of the rest of your life. It's your destiny to be better than this. God actually creates you in his likeness and his image not to do what Cain does, but he doesn't stop you from doing what Cain does. And that's the tragedy. Yeah. And so, yeah. And so he says to Cain, he says to Cain, there it is. It's outside the door. It's your job. To, it's your destiny. The, the Hebrew word there is closer to destiny. I wish the English had captured that. God says, it's your destiny to rule over that sin. And Cain ignores God and goes out into the field and kills Abel. And then God shows up and goes, hey, where's your brother? His blood cries out to me. Vengeance blood cries out to me. Fast forward all the way to the New Testament, book of Hebrews. You have come to the mountain of God with the church of the firstborn and innumerable company of angels, to God the judge and to Jesus the mediator, and to the blood that cries better things than the blood of Abel. What's Hebrews doing? It's telling you the blood of Jesus screams out better things than the blood of Abel. It's the narrow way, but it's the way that leads unto life. It, there's so many beautiful connections there. It's also why I, I believe that when the Bible says in Revelation that Christ, that the Lamb was slain from the foundation of the world, that's not the biblical way of saying that when God created man, He was going to put Jesus on the cross. No. The moment Cain shed Abel's blood, a new world started. A world built on the blood of Abel. Because in the book of Luke, Jesus said, the blood of all of the... Jesus says, the blood that's been shed from the foundation of the world shall be held upon this generation. He said, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah. Jesus starts at Abel. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah is going to be held on this generation. And it was. And Jesus died in that generation to take us out of that blood of Abel. But notice that the foundation of the world, that's another word for cosmos. That's civilization. The foundation of man's civilization started when Cain killed Abel. That's why I said to you earlier, Cain and Abel are the first human. They're the, they're, they're the end result of the, the sexual union of their parents. They represent us. And here's how we deal with each other. Ugh. So Jesus intervenes in the family of man. He intervenes in the brother's fratricide. He intervenes in us, in the family, sheds his own blood in place of Abel's. So that we're founded on the blood of Christ, which was blood shed out of self-sacrifice, not blood shed out of reciprocity. So that we are founded on the love of Jesus rather than the hate of Cain. Straight as the gate narrows away, few there be that find it. Broad's the way that goes the other way because it's easy to be like Cain. But to walk into the way of Christ is to resist the way of Cain, which is natural reciprocity. And, and the thing that's really moved me in the podcast was, what, what, was when we, we started to dig into that seven times curse and that 77 times curse. It's like every generation, God goes, it's just going to get worse if you keep going down this road. You're just going to bring more hell on yourself. Why do you keep doing this? And then there's that opposite moment where Jesus says to Peter, let's try 70 times seven. Let's, let's reverse this. Let's watch what happens if the kingdom, let's, let heaven start to explode. Let life start to explode rather than hell.